So, hello everybody. Hello. <laughs> uh, it's great to be here right now. I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm going to push through. So, um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Deb Gilmore. Uh, I'll introduce a little bit of background about my time here at Arcadia. So, I am just finishing up my sophomore year studying print and video communications and computer science. I am an honor student, and the fall semester of my freshman year, I was fortunate enough to win the honors program's first big idea competition, where I won $500 to create better sustainability initiatives at Arcadia through a committee that I call Waste EDU. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about making big ideas, bigger actions. I'm going to be honest, I was a little bit surprised when I was asked to present today. Uh, for people that know me, they know that I'm a person that loves to come up with big ideas all the time. I love to share my ideas with other people and I love to think really big. But I never really thought about that being something, a skill that I could really share with other people and teach people how to do. But I'm certainly going to try. I want to start with giving you guys a little bit of background information on younger Deb. Okay, get ready. Picture me 11 years ago. I am exactly the same height. <laughs> I wear polka dot rain boots every day, and I carried a stuffed duck named Cheese with me everywhere I went. Needless to say, I thought I was destined for better things, bigger things. Like, uh, Disney Channel. Yeah, that's right. I spent most of my third and fourth grade year pouring over casting calls, creating resumes for myself, uh, getting headshots done at the local Walmart, and auditioning for local productions. Unfortunately, my goal of becoming a Disney Channel star did not come to fruition, as my parents worked full-time jobs and I also lived 3,000 miles from Los Angeles. But the process itself was worth it. So, I'm here to talk to you today about making big ideas into bigger realities, into bigger actions, taking something from inside your head and turning it into something real. It's, it's something that like sounds really simple when you talk about it. It's almost as if you could Take it like in that machine in the Sneetches from Dr. Seuss, have your big idea, put it through some fancy machine, and out pops the idea on the other end. This clicker is a little bit strange, so I'm going to get used to it, I promise. <laughs> but there is a lot more to it. So how do we do that? How does that process happen? How do we start from an abstract idea in our head and turn it into something real, something tangible? I'm going to take you through my process in 10 steps that I came up with. So here we have how to turn a big idea into reality. Step one is to come up with the idea. Now, this in some ways is both the easiest and the hardest step. Because it's easy in that we come up with ideas all the time. We come up with ideas in our dreams, when we're walking to school, in the shower, Sometimes even in our most boring class. I'm sorry for the professors that are in the audience, but sometimes you have a boring class day and you come up with the coolest idea ever for your band. <laughs> so that's the first step. You come up with the idea, and from there you have to take it somewhere. So that's step two. Find a partner in crime. Now, your awesome idea, like for example, I was sitting at lunch with my freshman friend's first week of college, orientation, and I was looking down at my plate of food at the dining hall, and I just happened to have noticed and thought about how much food waste there must have been in the dining hall. A lot. And then I thought about, well, gee, everything in my plate right now could totally be composted. And I came up with the idea. It was that simple. Composting. But I could talk about it to a million friends and they could say, oh, Deb, that's a really cool idea. But I needed somebody to care about it as much as I did. An idea means nothing if you're the only person that cares about it. 
That would be like that one vegan friend who's yelling about the abuse of chickens on the car ride to Chick-fil-A with all of their friends. Like, it's just, it's just not gonna work. You can care about something as much as you want, but you need somebody to care about it with you. You need to find a partner who is equally passionate, equally available, and equally willing to work on your project as you are. You've gotta find the yin to your yang, the Simon to your Garfunkel, the Biden to your Obama. <laughs> a lot of people say that they hate group projects, but frankly, life is a group project. And for big ideas, this is actually a gift. Step three, come up with a plan. So you've got your partner, your, oh, your Biden, and you're ready to go, you're passionate about your project, but everything is still really abstract. It's like that suitcase that you frantically packed for a really long trip, and you have absolutely no idea of the contents of it. In order to take steps forward from this point, you've got to sit, unpack it, organize it, and put it in some drawers. When I entered the Big Idea competition, I was required to come up with a detailed plan of exactly everything that I wanted to do. I had to come up with a list of resources, a very detailed budget, and a very extensive calendar about how I intended to make my idea a reality. People will take you a lot more seriously if you show that you've put in the legwork. Speaking of people taking you seriously, you've got to share your idea. It's one step that you've got it all planned out, but the first thing that you've got to do when you have everything ready is to share it with people that are important. The first thing that I did after I was lucky enough to win the competition uh, and meet with my fellow students and faculty members that wanted to work on the project is I arranged a meeting with the head of the facilities department. That was the first step. I knew that I could not do anything moving forward with sustainability at Arcadia until I met with the people who were in charge. Step five, don't talk, take action. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. I really, really hate long meetings. Like, I really hate long meetings. And so for Waste EDU, I try to keep my meetings as short as humanly possible. We meet three times a month, every Monday, from 7 to 7.35, and we spend about 10 of those minutes every meeting talking about what we're gonna do. The rest of the time, we do stuff. We send emails, we consult with each other, we do research, we plan events, we push and we push and we push because the truth is, and a lot of people don't realize this, is you can spend about 70% of your time doing things and 30% of the time talking about it. Most people flip that. But you can always be doing things and you should always be doing things. Step six. Did I miss one? Did it go to step five? No? Okay. Step six. Let roadblocks encourage you, not discourage you. So, here's the deal. You're going to fail. I know, let that sink in. Chances are, the original plan that you came up with is not going to happen exactly the way that you want it to. When I first met with the facilities department at my school and talked about wanting to get composting at Arcadia, they told me that I would have to create a five-year plan in order to do so, and that the likelihood, even at that point of it happening, was extremely slim. I felt like all of my work was pointless. Every month that I spent planning every single thing, the calendar that I created, the budget that I created, I may as well have thrown out the window. Because at that point, I felt like I planned wrong. I hadn't considered how unrealistic, at the time, my idea had been. But that brings me to step seven. Be persistent. I didn't give up. And that's really important to remember in your daily life, and especially when you're doing things that are much, much bigger than yourself. At the time, composting may not have been possible, but I said, are you sure? And I did more research, and I tried new angles, and I brought in more people and asked more people, and found out new ways to approach the same problem. And then I expanded it, and I found different problems. 
realized, well, yes, composting is something that would be great at Arcadia, but maybe we should fix the recycling system first. And so we took a step back and we tried it from a new angle. And that's the key, is that there are always new angles that you can take on a problem. At the time, and at this particular time, full school composting is not something that we're going to get by the end of this year and by the end of next semester. But last year, an organic garden was certainly possible. Step eight, track your results, failures, successes, and contributors. So, as a communications major and a computer scientist, I have no choice but to take the time to emphasize the importance of data. You've got to track your results. If you've made it this far, chances are you have accomplished an enormous amount, you've hit a lot of roadblocks, you've made a lot of changes, met a lot of people, and done a lot of things. Document it. Pay attention to every failure, pay attention to every conversation, take notes, take minutes, take research, take surveys, take pictures. Put it on social media, connect with people in your general community and in the community at large. Tell more people about the things that you're doing. Document it, document it, document it. I cannot stress that enough. And then after you've documented it, share it with people. So WasteEDU has over 200 Instagram followers, several hundred Facebook followers. We have a Twitter that has an amount of followers. And we regularly try to connect with the, the Arcadia community and the community at large about everything that we're doing all the time. It's the best way that you can show people that you're actually doing stuff. It's one thing if you have a weekly meeting every week and you talk about stuff, and you could also be doing a million different things all the time. But if you don't show people what those things are, they'll never know. So I'm going to share with you something that we learned in Waste EDU after conducting a survey, an environmental survey, that some of you may have actually participated in. We had over 700 responses, and one thing that we found is that almost 75%, 75% of the Arcadia community does not know that we use collected rainwater to water our green, and it goes into geothermal wells under the ground that are then used to water nearby plant beds and heat and cool this building. Yeah, wow. 75% of people didn't know that. But we took the time and we said, hey, let's figure out what people know and let's share this information back with them. And we will be sharing that survey with you soon, I promise. Come to our last step. Lather, rinse, and repeat. If you've made it to one of your goals, you aren't even close to being done yet. Because you should think even bigger than that. If you made it to one goal, goal, make another one. And then make another one after that. And continue making goals until you have reached the point where you've accomplished more than you ever thought was possible. When I started BCDU, I was thinking, small, even though I won a big idea competition. I was thinking, I'm going to start this environmental club, and we're going to get composting in one year, and then I'm going to go on and do other things. Well, now I'm running a committee that operates with four separate subcommittees. Uh, we have projects including beekeeping, aquaponics in our greenhouse, a full-blown organic garden, a survey of uh, data collecting information, we're trying to get brand new recycling bins, organizing conferences, big events, the list goes on. It has continued to get bigger and will continue to get bigger because the truth is you're never done. If you're a person that wants to be a big idea creator, if you are an innovator, you're never done coming up with ideas and you never should be. So ideas can turn into actions. So I encourage all of you right now to just close your eyes if you want to, you don't have to, and think about the last cool idea that you had. Now, imagine if it actually happened. Imagine if you did create that app or that clothing line for bodies that you actually have instead of going to the store and having to tailor all of your clothes. Imagine if you were able to start a club on your campus, or a small business, or invent something. Well, you can. 
Your ideas are allowed to be big, and you should be allowed to explore them. And it is simpler than you may feel like it is. I really encourage all of you to get out there, think big, and make it happen. Thank you, everybody.